Hey guys, JD here with the 2022 Kawasaki Ultra 310 Series Jet Ski. In front of me is the Kawasaki service manual for the Ultra 310, along with a knock sensor. Today I wanted to address Code 69 issues, Code 7B issues, and the difference between the two. I've been hearing a lot of individuals reporting Code 69 errors, and so I wanted to clarify and provide some documentation on how to diagnose and fix this error directly from the Kawasaki service manual. This isn't wizardry, this isn't made up, this is the procedure directly from Kawasaki on how to diagnose and repair a Code 69 knock sensor malfunction. So we're going to go out to the ski in a minute and I'm going to show you the clip to disconnect the knock sensor as well as the location of the knock sensor. But I just wanted to take a moment in the shop here to show you what the sensor looks like. This sensor is brand new, never installed. I purchased it just to run some diagnostics on and to have an extra in the event that the one in my ski turns out to be bad. As many of you guys know from watching my channel, I've had no issues with my ski and it's been nothing but reliable and fun for the past uh, 25 hours that I've run it. But I wanted to take this opportunity to put together a video and this is just a look at the actual knock sensor. I'll be heading out to the ski in a moment to show you some video and then we'll get into some more of the diagnostics. So we're looking at the engine on the ski now. You can see your exhaust manifolds here. Your knock sensor is directly in the center of the block right below the intake manifold. And you can reach your hand down there and feel it. If you go to the front part of the engine, you can see that the knock sensor connector is right here. Using two hands, you press down this plastic clip and pull the two pieces apart. So as you can see from this image, the knock sensor is located right under the intake manifold as I kind of demonstrated earlier in the video. You can see the connector there, A. That connector is what you're gonna to need to disconnect in order to test the resistance of the sensor. So looking at the Kawasaki manual, your sensor should have a resistance between 504 and 616 kilo ohms. Obviously, as you see there, it says if the reading is out of the standard, replace. If you test your sensor using that connector right there, as I showed, if you test your sensor and it's got the correct resistance, the next step is to, re is to check the pin in the ECU. So that you could see where C is, that's the pin. You're gonna have one lead on the pin in the ECU, another lead on the connector and check for continuity. If there's not continuity, you have a nick in the wire or a problem with the wire. As you can see from this, the knock sensor circuit is very straightforward. It literally goes from the knock sensor directly to the ECU. It's very difficult for me to film this, uh, but what you're gonna do is put the positive lead from your multimeter into the connector like that. Then you're gonna take your other lead and you're gonna touch it to the body of the sensor. You can also touch it to any one of the exposed bolts on the engine. That'll give you a ground and it should give you the proper reading. So if you've checked your knock sensor, at the connector itself and everything came back within the proper tolerances. You're gonna to have to check your wire harness and your pins as I showed you. And you're gonna do that by removing, this is the right side of the ski, this compartment here. Run your finger along the side, pulling out the rivets. So that's gonna then allow you to access your ECU right here. Once you remove the access panel and you have the ECU in front of you, there's two connectors, a white one and a black one. Disconnect the black one. You're then going to look at the top row of pins and you're going to count five from the right. This light green wire here is the wire from the knock sensor. This is the one you're going to test for continuity. If you have continuity between this pin and the sensor, then the issue is likely with your ECU. And I suggest you contact a certified Kawasaki dealer for more assistance. I also wanted to clear up some confusion around code 69. So me uh, and with others included previously believed that code 69 meant um, either a problem with the sensor or that a code 69 was being triggered because of knocking in the engine. For 2022, that is not the case. If you had poor fuel 
or incorrect octane in your engine and the engine was knocking, you would get a code 7B. So again, code 7B and code 69 are completely different. Code 69 essentially means there's a problem with the knock sensor and its communication with the ECU, whereas code 7B is indicating that the sensor is actually detecting knock as a result of poor fuel, loose engine mounts, weed and debris in the pump, or incorrect alignment of the shaft and drive shaft. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe for more Kawasaki content.